We're having a spring-like day here in the Pacific Northwest. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, as we like to say here at Shady Acres Woodshop. Howdy! Today we have Ginkgo Biloba. This comes to us from viewer and longtime friend Dave at Calmwood Creations. I've had this piece for quite a while, trying to determine what to do with it. I fix my own meals here. I'm my own cook. And I'm not real imaginative when it comes to food. I like food quite a little bit, you can probably tell. But I don't know a lot about cooking it. I can get by, as you can probably tell. But anyway, so I watch a lot of uh, cooking videos to figure out what, what to cook next. And this one guy I watch uses a, a, a salt dispenser, a salt holder for his coarse salt, kosher salt. And I want one. So I'm going to make one. Some people call them salt containers, salt box, salt cellar. Salt cellar, C-E-L-L-A-R. That seems odd, an odd name to me, but it also seems to be the most commonly used name. So that's what I'm going to make out of this piece. We're going to lose all the bark. This is about five inches across and I need about four inches across. This is about four inches in length and I need about two and a half to three inches in length. I'm gonna trim it down and make myself a salt cellar. First I'm gonna find the center on each end of this. I did a little research on this wood before I came out here. It's a very ancient wood. It has survived a lot of Earth's history. It's a tight-grained wood, even though it's kind of soft, apparently. The piece doesn't weigh a lot, but I can see it's making some nice threads, so tight-grained it is. I have an idea of how I want to do this, but I don't know. I haven't planned out the steps exactly, so we'll kind of figure it out as we go along. And we'll use tailstock support just while we round it up. Shouldn't need it for much longer than that. My center hole is off slightly. That's okay. See what kind of speed we can get here. Should be able to do pretty good. About 1300 RPM. I'm gonna grab a, well, you know, I could probably use a roughing gouge on this. Either a roughing gouge or a bowl gouge, we'll, we'll see. Uh, mask and face shield on. I guess we'll go with the two inch roughing gouge. Okay, now I just want to square up the two ends, and for that we'll just use a parting tool. Well, I guess there's no point in doing both ends, because I'm going to only be using, like I said, about two and a half inches of it. So we'll put a, a recess on this bottom end. So I'll just mark out for the recess. Parting tool doesn't give you the cleanest cut in the world, but that's okay. We'll, we'll take care of that as we go along. Well, wouldn't you know, 
There was a little squirrel on that big tree out there. And now I don't see him anymore. But like I said, it's a beautiful spring day here in the Pacific Northwest. I'm going to use a 3 8 inch bowl gouge to clean out the recess. And I'm going to use this recess tool to create the dovetail over here on the side of the recess. That's good. And that's good. I guess I'll, uh, while we're here, I guess I'll cut it off to the right length. And for that I will return to the parting tool. And I need to mark that length. I'm going to go with three inches for now. I might change it later. That's a little bit deeper than I thought of. And I'll finish the cut once I flip it around. Well, as always, whenever I do a spindle turning, I get confused. I'm not used to doing things in, in steps, in a progression. I'm used to just winging it, you know. So, I need to sand this. <laughs> sand it first and before I turn it around. And maybe even put some finish on it. Duh. I'm starting at 150 grit. I'll work up through at least 400, maybe 600 on this. And I'll bring it back and we'll put some finish on there. The lathe is spinning in reverse at 300 RPM. See you in a bit. I thought I'd try this thing. I can't even remember how to use it. That's the main problem. So I'm going to turn the speed up around 500 RPM. I think I'm in the right spot here. We'll just see what happens. And I'm just going to take my point tool and outline this. Cool. Okay, time to flip it around. Oh no, got to put on some finish. What, what are you doing? Jeez. Hold on. I'm just going to use this uh, beeswax salad bowl finish. I've had it forever. Hardly ever use it. I used to use it on some little whistles that I, I used to make. I used to make a lot of little things that I don't really make anymore. Like tops and pens and uh, bottle stoppers and whatever. And this is a food safe finish. 
so my salt should be safe. I did stop at 400 grit, seemed plenty smooth to me. This is a pretty nondescript grain in this, so this might have been the perfect piece of wood for what I'm using it for. Got one one little knot right there. Now a little bit of little bit of color in the green, not much. So I'm gonna let this set up for just uh, I can't remember what it says, ten minutes or something, and then I'll buff it with a clean cloth, and then it'll be time to turn it around, and start working on the rest of the piece. See you in a little bit. Turn the speed up to about a thousand RPM and just buff it up. I don't think this stuff comes to a high shine or anything. It just protects it. Ooh, feels nice. Yeah. Well, you know what? Like I said, it's a spring day and I got spring fever and I'm gonna go jump in my side by side. I hear lawnmowers, I hear chainsaws I hear people doing things where I live I can't see anybody so I'm, I'm gonna go right around the neighborhood on my side by side and see what's going on so we'll take this up tomorrow I think I've got some lint there in the middle yep that's better see you tomorrow well, I'm glad I got my spring fling out of the way yesterday when it was 61 degrees. Today it's 41 degrees and raining. And I had a lot of fun. It was it was worth stopping. Now, I could cut this piece off, this waste piece, as we are, as it is right now. But um, I want access to the top of this. So I'm going to just turn it around. Sounds like I could put a little wax on those threads, huh? I'm, I'm just going to turn it around and cut cut it off this way so that I can clean up this top edge. This is all waste. And then I'm going to demount it again and do a little short operation and then remount it again. And to cut it off I'm going to use this thin parting tool. So now I just want to clean the face of this up a little bit, make sure it's flat. I'm going to have the lathe spinning at uh, 1300 RPM, half inch bowl gouge, mask and face shield on. about as good as it can get. Let's see if it's flat. It is. Now I want to take it off and drill a hole in the in the edge here. I want to, I could drill it on the lathe but I, I need it to be straight and perpendicular to the top for this brass rod to go in here. I'm just going to drill straight through the this will be the top probably, I don't know, three-eighths of an inch thick or so. And then I want to drill it down into the body some. And that's going to serve as a pivot point for the top to swivel open, get your salt out, swivel it closed. I could use a smaller one, but I, I kind of want it to show. I might even make it proud of the, the surface. I might let it stick up a little bit. I haven't quite decided about that. Not much, just a an eighth of an inch or maybe even less. So I'm going to take this over to the drill press so that I get a, a nice straight hole. I forgot to set my depth stop before I got this all positioned and I don't want to reposition it so I put a piece of tape on here for how deep I want to go. It's not a critical measurement anyway, it's just 
whatever I decide, and that's what I decided. Now I just want to sand this up and get a finish on it, so I'm just going to use my 2 inch disc starting at 150 grit, and I'll sand up through 400 as I did the outside. Put my wax on there, and then we're going to separate the lid from the body. So that's what it looks like. It won't take long. I'll be right back. We'll get some finish on there and separate it. Now I just want to measure how deep my hole is. So what did I say? About three-eighths of an inch? Yeah, that looks about right. I'm going to use my thin parting tool again. About 1100 RPM. Well, of course, it's not flat. It's high in the center. You see that? So my thought was put this on here backwards with uh, double face tape, flatten this off, clean it up. Now I can use the uh, brass rod to help me line this up. Then I'm just going to apply pressure with my tailstock ram and let that set for five minutes or so and I'll be back and we'll uh, smooth this off. Alright, now it's uh, sand it up, get some finish on it, just as before. And I'll do that up to 400 and put some finish on there. Then we can actually start working on the body, what do you know? And again, I'm using this beeswax salad bowl finish. And this is the underside of the lid. I, I'm telling you that just so that I'll remember. <laughs> Getting confusing. I think this is a perfect piece of wood for this. Good job, Dave. Okay, I'll let that set for five minutes. I'll buff it up. I'm going to just turn my heater on to soften this uh, tape and then just pull it off of there. So I'll bring you back here in a little bit. Cool. It came off of here clean too. Alright, so we can finally get started on the inside. But that's going to be tomorrow because it's 6 o'clock and I got to go cook my dinner. See you tomorrow. This is a piece that should take about an hour and a half. I'm working on three days, mostly because of the weather. I told you a couple of days ago it was so nice out. It was the hottest day of the year, 61 degrees. I jumped in my side-by-side -side and drove around the neighborhood and whatnot. Yesterday I woke up to rain and 41. 
This morning I woke up to snow and it's currently 39. So here we are. Now I see I've probably made a mistake. It's, it's going to be okay. It'll work. I wish I would have used a smaller dowel or, or brass rod than I did. Because now I'm going to have like a half inch thick wall. I got to leave a little bit of distance for strength. And I got to leave a little bit of distance here for strength. So that's about a half an inch wall. It doesn't hurt anything like I said. It'll still work. But geez. So that'll be the size of our ball. If I would have used an eighth inch, which would have been plenty strong enough. I mean, there's no reason for strength on this. I'd have half that. I'd have a quarter inch instead of a half inch. But that's this is what we have, so that's what we have. I actually finished up the lid. I put the, the wax on here and I glued in the, the brass rod. And it's just a little bit proud. You can feel it. It looks okay. Well, that's just about deep enough. Got that recess in there to consider. I looked these up on Amazon, and by the way, you can buy one for about 15 bucks. So I'm, I'm not even making minimum wage here. <laughs> All the ones I looked at, I looked at wooden ones. They have uh, ceramic ones as well, I think. They all had square, it's like they drilled a hole with a Forstner bit. And they had square sides rather than a nice curve like this. And you'd never, you'd never be able to reach in there into those corners down in the bottom and get your salt out of there. Anyway, I want mine to be curved like it is here. I'll go a little bit further, but not much. I think that's a, I think that's good enough. That's a lot of salt. That's probably a cup. Got a cup of salt in there, probably. That's a lot of salt. I think I'll see if I can scrape it any cleaner than it is. Okay, we're good. Time for sanding. I'm starting at 240 grit. I'm just going to work up to 400. And I'll bring it back. We'll put some wax on there. This is kind of strange grain, isn't it? Normally I would say that was my turning, but it, it just isn't. It's, uh, I, I guess maybe it's because the pith is way off center. So what? I, I don't know. I, I don't know. Maybe it's just strange grain. You got almost white, and you got almost orange. But it'll do the trick, I believe. It's not supposed to be a showpiece. It's supposed to be a utility piece. Okay, I'll let that dry a bit, buff it up, and we'll take a look at it with the lid on. Yay! Well, there we have it. One ginkgo biloba salt cellar in the book. It's just not the most attractive grain, you know, but it's quite practical. We certainly wouldn't want anything with bug holes or cracks or whatever. There's just not a lot to see here, though. Not my typical turning. I think that'll hold a cup of salt quite nicely. It's easy to get your fingers in there. Maybe these sidewalls, now that I have the lid on and have a chance to try it, maybe the sidewalls don't bother me that much. 
cute little detail on the bottom. Not much to it, but it's cool. These would probably make some pretty great gifts, I guess, or uh, if you sell your stuff, probably great at a craft fair. But you probably could learn from some of my mistakes, like the, like the thick side walls, if you don't like that. Use an eighth inch dowel, don't use a quarter inch. But like I said, it, it doesn't really affect it at all. I also was going to use my little decorating tool and put a, put a little decoration along here. I actually forgot to do that. It doesn't need it. It doesn't bother me, but it might have been, it might have been cutesy. Well, it'll be fun for me to use, and it is for me, so I'm happy about it. Thank you to Dave from Calmwood Creations for sending this along for all to enjoy. If you like this video, thumbs up, please. I'd sure appreciate it. If you're a subscriber, that is totally cool. Thank you so much for that. I really appreciate it. If you're not a subscriber, you might consider becoming one. I put out regular videos about one a week, and I'd like to keep in touch. An easy way to subscribe is just click my picture you see there near the end of the video. Your comments are always welcome, and I read all of them. So for now, this is Phil, Shady Acres Woodshop, signing off.